menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance a horror. Gather around the table, we'll give you a treat. Fiddles to play with and life has to be. And while we are playing, the candles are burning low. Hello, my name is Melinda Gordon. Welcome to our Hanukkah special, where we ask the burning question, how do you spell Hanukkah? I spell Hanukkah C-H-A-N-U-K-K-A-H. I spell it Hanukkah H-A-N-N-U-K-A-H. H-A-N-N-U-K-H or H-A-N-U-K-K-A-H or H a N N U K K A H or H A N U K A H. Now I'd like to read a short story about the history of Hanukkah that's in a book called The Uninvited Guest and Other Jewish Holiday Tales by Nina Jaffe. Hanukkah is a winter holiday that falls in the month of Kislev in the Jewish calendar, which is November or December. Originally, it was a minor festival, but it has grown in importance throughout the centuries. The story of Hanukkah dates back in time to a period in Jewish history roughly about 175 before the Common Era, when Israel, then called Judea, was under the rule of Syrian Greeks, led by a king named Antiochus. Jews were forced to give up their religious beliefs and practices. Even the temple in Jerusalem was taken over by the soldiers. Anyone daring to disobey these orders and to practice their religion was put to death. A small band of citizens, led by Matityahu and his five sons, Eliezer, Shimon, John, Yonatan, and Judah, rebelled against Antiochus. They and their followers, who came to be known as the Maccabees, led a war of independence that finally ended in victory. Legend has it that when the Maccabees returned to Jerusalem, only a small amount of oil remained to light the temple's menorah. Miraculously, the tiny flame lasted for eight days, enough time for messengers to return with a full supply of oil. Hanukkah then is celebrated for eight days in memory of this miracle. On each night, in homes and in synagogues, another candle is added to an eight-branched menorah until on the last night all the candles have been lit. Hanukkah traditions are many. Children play dreidel, which is a game of chance played with a spinning top. Food cooked in oil, such as potato pancakes called latkes, or sufganiyot, which is the Hebrew word for donuts, is served. Gift giving during Hanukkah is a more recent tradition, but even in earlier times, children were given shiny coins called gelt, nuts or candy. The story of the Maccabees with its emphasis on religious freedom and its message of hope and faith has made Hanukkah one of the most beloved celebrations of the Jewish year. Welcome to the music portion of our Hanukkah special. And there's a lot of great music associated with the Hanukkah season. There's entire oratorios like Judas Maccabeus that tell the Hanukkah story, in fact. But, in fact, we're going to specialize tonight in the children's songs, because those are the best known and most popular Hanukkah songs. And here to help us out singing children's songs, we have Daphna and Dahlia and Mira and Joella. And uh, they're going to help us out. And the first thing we're going to sing about is one of the popular symbols of Hanukkah, the dreidel, the spinning top, which comes from originally a German game, a German spinning top game. And it became a symbol that died out in Germany, but stayed as a Jewish symbol throughout the centuries and is still played today. And the Yiddish word is dreidel. And the most popular song is a Yiddish song, Ich bin a kleine dreidel, I am a little dreidel. But in English we sing, I have a little dreidel. Now in Israel,
Israel, they don't call that top a dreidel. They call it a sivivon. And one of the most popular Israeli Hanukkah songs is called Sivivon Sov Sov Sov. Sivivon, spin, spin, spin. Her favorite games is the dreidel. Dalia brought with her a few kind of dreidels and she's going to share with us what are the special letters that are written on the dreidel. Yes, Dalia. Um, this dreidel has a nun, a gimel, a hay, and a shin. Each letter stands for something. The nun stands for Ness. Ness is miracle. Gimel stands for Gadol, a big miracle. Hay stands for for Haya. Haya means happened. And this letter Shin stands for Sham because a big miracle happened there in Israel. But I see that one of the drills there is a bit different. There's a different letters on it. Can you tell us why is this one different from all the others? This one is a dreidel from Israel. So as I told you, Neskador Haya. But this pay stands for Paul because in Israel they wouldn't say that a big miracle happened in America. They would say that it happened where they are. So it's Nes Gadol Haya Sham and Nes, Nes Gadol Haya Po. Great miracle happened there in Israel and great, great miracle, miracle happened, happened here. Which people in Israel said. And the FNA is going to teach us how to make an origami dreidel that you can decorate your house with. All right. So what we do, we take a piece of paper, origami if you wish, in a square form. What you do, you put it on the blank side and you fold it in half. And then you crease it right there. Now what you do, you open the paper and you take one of the sides and fold it into the middle and then you crease it. And you do the same thing with the other side. Oops. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the bottom of the dreidel, like right there. So now we're going to take the two corners right here and fold them into the middle like this. And you do the other side. Now to make the body of the dreidel, we take this long part that's left right there and we fold it in like this to make the body. Now, if we don't want a long um, handle. handle, we're going to fold it just like this, a little bit shorter, so now it looks like that. Now what we're going to do with the edges of these, we're going to sort of like bring them in. bring them in, and there should be a triangle shape right there. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Maybe you can show it to the camera. And now you flip it around and you have your dreidel. It's so small. There is another one. Sorry. Happy Hanukkah! Chag Sameach! Chag Sameach! Another really popular Hanukkah song is called Oi Hanukkah, Oi Hanukkah, or O oh Hanukkah, O oh Hanukkah. And this song is based on an old Eastern European Jewish dance, the Freiluchs. And the Freiluchs went like this. Very 
very popular Freiluchs where people danced around in a circle. This was one of the most popular melodies of a Freiluchs. And so eventually somebody wrote a Hanukkah song. One of the Yiddish poets wrote a Hanukkah lyric to this particular Freiluchs. And we're going to do it for you now in Yiddish and then in Hebrew as it's sung in Israel and then in English as it's sung in America. So this is Oi Hanukkah, Oi Hanukkah. Hanukkah, oi Hanukkah, a yonti vashener, a lustiker, a freilichen, a ton, no chazener, a le nacht in dreidel spielen mir. Sie dich heiße Latte, sie essen on a schier geschwinder, sind Kinder, die den nicke lichte lachon. So tal ha nisi, my god, war die nisi, man kommt gicher tanzen in Korn. So tal ha nisi, my god, war die nisi, man kommt Tanzen in Korn. share with you one of my favorite Hanukkah story. It, the name of it is The Tree of the Dancing Goat by Patricia Polacco. This is a wonderful story about friendship between people in one little town in Michigan. And I want to share with you a few of, of my favorite part of it. And I'm going to start with the first page. At our farm just outside Union City, Michigan, we didn't celebrate the same holiday as most of our neighbors but we share their delight and anticipation of them just the same. And this is how the, the family was starting to prepare for the holiday. The grandmother was making special candles. The grandfather was making special gifts for the kids. And they were all getting ready with special cooking and special spirit and song. But a news, some news came to, their, to, came to them from town that the scarlet fever was spreading all over town. And even though it was one of their favorite holidays, very festive, the festival of light, they couldn't feel very festive because their, their friends were very, very sick. And they decided to do something very, very special. Even though they were Jews and their friends were Christian, they decided to help their friends to celebrate their holiday, the holiday of Christmas. And they decided to take and make more food and even cut some trees and, and prepare some Christmas trees and decorate them with the little gift that their grandfather made for them. And most of the cooking they took to their friends to make them happy in this beautiful time of, of the year when everybody is celebrating festivals of light. One of my favorite, favorite part of it in the end when they get together and they remember that this holiday was very, very special. And I'm going to share this last page with you. Our neighbors all recovered from the terrible fever. Few were left with any permanent damage. What they were left with was a long, cherished memory of that Christmas when Santa really did come. And my family, too, has never forgotten the incredible winter of the, of, of the fever, the miracle of true friendship, and the trees of the dancing goat. And this story fits so well to Hanukkah because Hanukkah, one of the main part of, of this celebration is to celebrate the freedom, the freedom of religion, the freedom that everybody can celebrate, that everybody can practice their religion. And this is beautiful and this is how we're lucky here in the United States and in other parts that we can celebrate with our friends Christmas and Hanukkah. 
And one of the wonderful things that we do during Hanukkah, as you can see in this picture and around us, we, we light, can, we, we light uh, the candles in the menorah. And one of the tradition is to put it in the window so everybody can see this light. We start with one candle in the first day, and then we increase to six, two candles, and three, and four, until we get to eight, because the idea is to let it, the light to be brighter and brighter and bring more light to the world, more friendship, and to make it a happier and nicer place to be. Happy Hanukkah. Another very popular American song was written by Judith Kaplan Eisenstein, who was the daughter of Mordechai Kaplan, who founded the Reconstructionist Movement. And she wanted to write new songs that went with the American spirit and the new kind of spirit she saw in 20th century Judaism. So she wrote English songs, like this very popular one, which is called it, through the window where we can see the glow. confusing. You sometimes can lose count in a song like that. Anyhow, it goes all the way up to eight days, and then the holiday is over, and they stop singing Hanukkah songs. So now I'm going to draw a typical menorah, or Hanukkiot. So, um, first, here we have the base of our Hanukkiot, the stem with the shamus at the top, draw a candle. Then we have four on each side. We have one, two, three, four, and four on this side for the eight days of Hanukkah. Now each night we light another candle. So for this, for we'll say tonight is the first night, so we light our shamas and we light the first candle and we start from right to left because that's how you read Hebrew. So this is the first night of Hanukkah. Now when it's all eight, now each night we add one more candle to the night before so if it's the second night of Hanukkah, we add a second candle with the first, with the shamas and the first night. So you can see this is the second night of Hanukkah. And at the end of Hanukkah, excuse my artistic abilities, you have eight lit candles. And this is our menorah. For Hanukkah. From the eve of the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev, Jews observed the holiday of Hanukkah. Every night they had one more candles to their menorah to bring more and more light to their home and to the world. We put the menorah next to the window so it won't be just for us, but for everyone around the world, so everybody can see that there is more lights in the world, and hopefully we will have more lights in the world. We have a special blessing that we say over the candles to remember the miracle that happened during Hanukkah. We're going to sing it in two different tunes, one that it's from Israel and one that we sing here in the United States. We're going to start with the one that's from the United States. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech 
מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו להדליק נר של חנוכה. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשת ניסים לאבותינו בימים ההם בזמן הזה. And now we're going to do it in the, the Israeli tune. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשה ניסים לאבותינו, בימים ההם בזמן הזה. אמן. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשה ניסים לאבותינו, בימים ההם בזמן הזה. אמן. מה עוד צו ישועתי, לך נאה לשבח. תיקון בית תפילתי, ושם תודה נזבח. Michaela, how do you spell Hanukkah? Uh, H A N K A. That's all I know. H A N K A. Put my hands and in my sleep. H A N N A H K A. H A N U K K A A H Did we do that right? Congratulations. A A What comes back? N U K K A H That's it. That's all folks. I spell Hanukkah T H A N U K K A H. But now when I look at that, that does not look like that's how you spell Hanukkah. So I also spell it C H A N N U K A H. Now this way I think looks a lot better than the other way. So this is how I spell Hanukkah with two N's and one K. But some people think this is Chanukkah because this is in the American language the CH sound is CH. So, but when Israelis or people who are Jewish say it, they say Hanukkah. So this is the more American way of spelling it is H A N N U K A H Whichever way you spell Hanukkah, I hope you have a very warm, a very peaceful, and a very happy Hanukkah. Chag Sameach, Lehitraot, Happy Holidays, and hope to see you again. אז אגמור בשיר מזמור חנוכת המזבח אז אגמור בשיר